Today is celebration of the fourth Sunday of Easter, traditionally known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Let us renew our vision to share the life of Christ and be the love of Christ and sing together, Jesus is risen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our risen Christ, the love of our God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. And good morning, everyone, and welcome as we gather in the presence of our God. On this Good Shepherd Sunday, let us open our hearts to the abundance of God's mercy, grace, and forgiveness that we find in Christ our Lord. Lord Jesus, you are the bread of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you are the cup of salvation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, lead us to a share in the joys of heaven, so that the humble flock may reach where the brave shepherd has gone before. 
who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and proclaimed, Let the whole house of Israel know for certain that God has made both Lord and Christ, this Jesus, whom you crucified. Now when they heard this, they were cut to the heart. And they asked Peter and the other apostles, What are we to do, my brothers? Peter said to them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit for the promise is made to you and to your children and to all those far off whomever the Lord our God will call. He testified with many other arguments and was exhorting them, Save yourselves from this corrupt generation. Those who accepted his message were baptized and about 3,000 persons were added that day. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
mercy follow me all the days of my life. I will dwell in the house of my God forevermore. Shepherd me, O God, beyond my wants, beyond my fears, from death A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, if you are patient when you suffer for doing what is good, this is a grace before God. For to this you have been called because Christ also suffered for you, leaving you an example that you should follow in his footsteps. He committed no sin, and no deceit was found in his mouth. When he was insulted, he returned no insult. When he suffered, he did not threaten. Instead, he handed himself over to the one who judges justly. He himself bore our sins in his body upon the cross so that free from sin we might live for righteousness. By his wounds you have been healed. For you had gone astray like sheep, but you have now returned to the shepherd and guardian of your souls. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John glory to you O Lord Jesus said amen amen I say to you whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber but whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep the gatekeeper opens it for him and the sheep hear his voice as the shepherd calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, the Pharisees did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. 
All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that you might have life and have it more abundantly. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I came that you might have life and have it more abundantly. I must confess that line from scripture that we heard at the end of today's gospel has, it's always intrigued me. And actually, it's originally what hooked me on Jesus. Jesus had me when I was much younger at the word abundantly. Who doesn't love abundance? And so that's what I that's what I grabbed a hold of when I was much younger, the whole fact that Jesus was going to offer to me something in abundance. Now I must confess, the older that I've gotten, Jesus has had me at the word life. To have a life. Isn't that what we all desire? And I think the older that we get, the more we realize how incredibly precious this gift is. The gift simply of life, whether it's abundantly or not. To have the gift of life. That's what Jesus comes and that's what he offers to us. And we realize during these pandemic days, during these stay-at-home days, during these times when we are confined to just being with the family members that we love, we have come to realize the real difference between making a living and having a life. So perhaps that's one of the real gifts that's being offered to us during these days and during these weeks when we are asked to keep our distance from one another and when we are asked to stay at home and in the midst of course of people struggling financially with unemployment and the like we begin to realize the real difference between making a living and how important that is but also what this pandemic is offering to us and that is to also understand the importance of, of having a life. And the two are different. They're vastly different. Making a living and having a life. Both are different. Both are incredibly important. So during these days when making a living is not something that many of us are able to do, why we are invited to reflect upon this precious gift of life. And what does this life look like? What is it that Jesus is offering to us? Perhaps how is it that we are supposed to experience it? And of course, Jesus gives us that answer in the gospel today as well. He tells us that life, that life is a gate. Life is a gate. A gate that swings both ways. A gate that allows access in and the ability to go out. To come in and to go out into green pastures, Jesus says to us. Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life. And of course, that life means that he who defines himself today as a gate invites you and I to enter through that gate and to go out from that gate because when we do then we know what life looks like and how it is to be experienced and embraced and lived each day. I'm one of those 
rare priest that still loves, after 30 years of ordination as a priest, that still loves to work with young couples and to celebrate the sacrament of matrimony. Not that priests don't like marriage, of course, even though we're not allowed to get married, but most priests, of course, after many, many years of working with couples, grow tired of it. But I still find it fascinating. In the very first, first meeting that I have with couples, I want to know all the gory details. I want to know how they got to this point in their life, how they met, how that came about, what that first date was like. And so, of course, as I invite them, to tell their story. There's many similarities between all couples. Many of them today meet on the internet, online. Some meet through a, a mutual friend. So there's a lot of similarities, but where there's immense diversity and difference is what that first encounter, what that first date or dates were like. And so just recently, as I was working with a couple and visiting with them, why the bride to me, to be, said to me, Father Steve, you know, that first date we went out for, we went out for a nice meal, and after the nice meal, why, why the owner of the restaurant knew that it was our first date or found out somehow, maybe through the, the wait staff, and why he came and he offered us a free dessert. And after eating the dessert, she said, you're not going to believe this. But she said, my... My fiancé and I, why back then, way back then, we sat there and we talked for four hours. For four hours. And I looked at them and I said, my God, what did you all talk about? And of course, she smiled and she said, we talked about like everything. We talked about ourselves and our interests and, of course, our hobbies. We talked about what it is that we find enjoyable in life. We talked about, well, we talked about ourselves and all that we found that we held in common. As she described that first date, that opportunity that she had to be in the presence of this other, she was talking about, my friends, having a life and allowing herself and this person she now has met and had a first date with, how she is allowing him access into her life. You see, that's what life is. It's relationships. It's having a relationship with our God and with one another, and it's allowing access for other people to enter into our lives and for we to enter into theirs, and it always has to be done through the gate, which is Christ. Because the gate, my friends, is love. That's what the gate is. When Jesus says, I am the gate, and whoever desires to have life must come through it why he's inviting us to enter into love. And isn't that what that young lady who talked to her later-to-be fiancé for four hours on their first date, isn't that what she was describing? She was describing the fact that she was taking the time and he was taking the time to be able to allow access into their hearts, into their lives. Each of them was entering through the gate. And the gate offered them the opportunity to, to fall in love. That phrase has always confused me, to fall in love. It sounds painful. To fall in love means that we have to, well, we have to fall. I prefer to call it, why, letting in love. That's what today's gospel reading invites us to do. When Jesus describes himself as the shepherd, as he describes himself as the gate, as he invites you and I to have life and to have it abundantly, he's inviting you and I to let in love and to allow ourselves to enter into it as well. Because when we do, then relationships are formed. 
and weddings get to be planned and people come together and we become united and we do all this around the simple gift the gift of love the gift of the gate the gift that invites you and I life abundant life I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the, born Father, of the Father before Jesus. all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, mm -hmm. not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and, and for our salvation, salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered to death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. With confident faith, we now turn to our God for his help as we offer these prayers for our church leaders that they be guided by the Holy Spirit as they seek new ways to shepherd the Lord's flock with patience and love we pray Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for all countries suffering from the coronavirus that led by the Spirit we set aside differences and work together as we share our resources to help each other. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. For those who work in health care, that they are given the resources they need and are blessed with good health. In thanksgiving for them and their sacrifices, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in our area faith community who are sick, lonely, ignored, forgotten, or suffering, that we help shepherd them to experience the love, joy, and healing they need. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For guidance, strength, and love in our families as they struggle through uncertain times. We pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those who have died, may they come to see the face of God. Remembering Fran Stoffel, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For favorable weather throughout the planting and growing season, and for all the unspoken prayers we hold in our hearts, we pray. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. O oh Lord our God, source of all goodness and grace, we thank you for the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is the gate, the life that we seek, and the love that we desire to share. Hear us as we offer these petitions. Answer them according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the, may the Lord, Lord accept, accept this sacrifice at your hands for the, for the praise, praise and glory of God's his name, for our good and the good, good of all this holy church. Grant, O Lord, that we may always find delight in these paschal mysteries, so that the renewal constantly at work within us may be the cause of our unending joy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit, lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all, to laud you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the Lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers, with the angelic hosts, sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, with all the clergy and with all your people. Remember also our sisters and our brothers who have died in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all. We pray that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
Together we now pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Shepherd and sheep, my God and I, to fresh green fields to let my steps in days gone by. You gave me rest by quiet springs and filled my soul with peace your loving presence brings. Oh, shelter me, oh, shelter me. The way ahead is dark and difficult to see. Oh, shelter me, oh, shelter me. All will be well if only you will shelter me. Yet now I tread a different way. Death dogs my path with stealthy steps from day to day. I cannot find your peaceful place, but dwell in dreary darkness longing for your face. Oh, 
shelter me, O oh, shelter me. The way ahead is dark and difficult to see, O oh, shelter me, O oh, shelter me. All will be well if only you will shelter me. I will look back in days to come and realize your faithfulness has led me home. Within your house I'll find my peace, trusting that in your mercy you have sheltered me. Oh, shelter me, oh, shelter me. The way ahead is dark and difficult to see. Oh, shelter me, oh, shelter me. All will be well if only you will shelter me. Let us pray. Look upon your flock, kind shepherd, and be pleased to settle in eternal pastures the sheep you have redeemed by the precious blood of your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we go again, please know of our continued prayers for you, for your loved ones, and for all who are in need. We continue to reach out to a God who is our, indeed our Good Shepherd, and we offer to him the needs and the prayers and the petitions of all those who suffer from this coronavirus. If you are ever in need of anything, please do not hesitate to call our parish office uh, during our regular office hours so that we might try to be of assistance to you uh, during these most difficult days. Again, have a great week and know of our prayers. Our final song is Canticle of the Sun. Shouting for joy, come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the Son, the bringer of day. He carries the light of the Lord in his rays, and the moon and the stars who light up the way. Unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the wind that blows through the trees, the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze. They blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens 
See you. 